Hi there. Now before we do the last part, part C, just to recap if you hadn't watched part A or part B in my previous videos. In these questions we've had this particle P which moves along the x-axis and at time t seconds the velocity of P was v meters per second in the direction of x increasing and v was given by this equation here 2t squared minus 14t plus 20 where t was greater than or equal to zero. And in part A we had to find the times when P was instantly at rest and that was at 2 and 5 seconds. And then in part B we had to work out the greatest speed of P in the interval between 0 and 4 seconds inclusive and we found that it was 20 metres per second. Now with this question we're asked to find the total distance travelled by P in the interval between 0 and 4 seconds inclusive and this is for 5 marks so if you'd like to have a go at this one I'll just give you a moment to pause the video and when you come back I'll take you through the work solution. Okay welcome back then if you had a go. Now to do this not that you have to draw this but uh, I think it might help in explaining it if you're having problems. What I've done here is I've drawn the graph of v equaling 2t squared minus 14t plus 20. In fact we did this graph, we discussed it in part b and it was a parabola then and because in part a we found that it, the particle came to rest at t equal 2 and 5 then the curve passes through the t-axis here when t equals 2 and t equals 5. And this summarizes the motion of the particle. When t was equal to naught, it was moving, say, to the right at 20 meters per second. And then it started to slow down. When, and at t equals 2 seconds, it came to rest. And now we've got a negative velocity over this stretch. So it reversed direction and it started to speed up and then started to slow down again coming to rest again at t equals 5 seconds and then it turned round went in the positive sense because velocity is positive over this stretch turned around and then starts to speed up so when it comes to working out this total distance traveled over this interval 0 to 4 we can see now that what we've got to do from a graphical point of view is essentially work out the area underneath the curve because remember working out the area underneath the velocity time graph gives us the distance travelled but we've got to be very careful here because with this graph you can see part of it's above the t-axis and part of it, the bit that we're interested in anyway, is below and so this will come out as a negative value. So we've got to do it in two parts. We've got to work out that distance which is given as the integral of the velocity with respect to time, essentially giving us the area under the graph. So we'll do it in two parts. We'll look at the distance first of all between t equaling 0 to 2 seconds and that's going to be equal then to the integral of the velocity with respect to time and it's going to go then from 0 to 2 and so if we put in what v is okay going from 0 to 2 v is 2t squared then minus 14t plus 20 and we need to bracket that up and integrate it all with respect to t and in the usual way then, if we carry out that integral, the first term becomes 2t cubed over 3. And then for the 14t, it's going to be 14t squared divided by 2. And then for the 20, that will be plus 20t. So we've got our limits then going between 0 and 2. And if we substitute our values in, putting t equals 2 into the first term here gives us 16 over 3, 16 thirds. 
And for this second term, I can see that the 2 cancels into the 14 7 times. So if you put 2 through here, you're going to get minus 28, the result of 7 times 4. And then the last term here, 20 times 2, that's going to be 40. Put 0 through, you get 0. OK, so working this out, that distance, let's just come down this next column here, OK? That distance is going to be, we'll just put distance 0 to 2, is going to equal, that comes to 52 over 3, 52 thirds then meters. Now we want the distance traveled between t equals 2 to t equals 4. Next, okay, so we'll just put that here distance between t equaling 2 to t equaling 4 seconds. Now, if we do the integral of this curve between 2 and 4, what we're going to get then is a negative value, and distance can't be negative. So, what I'm going to have to do is to negate my answer, okay, so we have a double negative, meaning that I get a positive value for the distance. I'm just putting that in red just to draw your attention to that point. Now, if we integrated v with respect to time, we're going to be doing this integral. We're going to arrive at this answer here. So we'll just put that back in the brackets here. 2t cubed then over 3 minus 7t squared, OK, plus 20t. And this now will be between the limits then of t equaling 2 to 4. Now if we start to put our limits through here, OK, we'll put that red negative down again just to highlight it. But putting 4 through first of all, we end up with the first term here being 128 over 3, 128 thirds. Next term is minus 112 and then this term here is 80. And then we'll just put that in brackets. We would subtract what we get when we put 2 through. When we put 2 through here, you end up with 16 thirds. 2 into the minus 70 squared gives us minus 28. And 2 into the 20 times t is going to give us plus 40. And just close that bracket off there. Now if you work this out inside the square brackets, what you get is minus 20 over 3. So you've got the red minus there, okay, just again highlighting this fact. And you've got minus 20 over 3 if you work out inside this bracket. So really the distance now is 20 over 3, 20 thirds. So therefore, when it comes to the total distance traveled by the particle, okay, it's going to be our previous answer, 52 thirds, plus the 20 thirds. And we end up with a total of 24, 24 meters. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Got to be careful though over this second stretch and that's where I think, as I say, the graph comes in handy.